Hello, fellow artists. This is Linda Riddle, and it's a good time for art. Today, we're doing our third lesson on exploring color. Color is such an important element of art. As artists, we want to have a very clear understanding of how to use it to our advantage. We'll be using every single one of our color mixing skills today. So if you haven't seen the previous two color videos, check those out first. I'll put a link down below to those lessons. When we talk about art, one theme comes up again and again. Looking, looking, looking. Looking at art opens our eyes, our minds, and sometimes even our hearts. Artists teach us a new way to see our world. As we become artists ourselves, we're really learning to look at our surroundings in a new way. I find that when I look at something carefully enough to draw it or to paint it, it's a revelation. It's like looking at something for the first time. One fun way to learn to look carefully is to change our point of view. If we look at a garden, we might see a collection of colors, shapes, lines, and textures. But if we take just one flower from that garden, we're going to see something completely different. If we look closely enough at that flower, it may stop looking like a flower to us. It may be more a collection of colors, lines, shapes, and textures. Georgia O'Keeffe was an artist who started exploring this idea almost 100 years ago. She said, when you take a flower in your hand and really look at it, it's your world for the moment. I want to give that world to someone else. Most people in the city rush around so. They have no time to look at a flower. I want them to see it whether they want to or not. Her gigantic paintings of flowers did cause people to look and brought her recognition early in her career. Georgia O'Keeffe was the second of seven children born on a farm in Wisconsin. By the age of 10, she had decided to become an artist. She studied art after high school, but became discouraged by the traditional approach used in art schools. She worked for a while as a commercial artist and later taught art for several years. During that time, she studied art during the summers. One of her teachers, Arthur Wesley Dow, had a big influence on her work. He created art based on personal style and interpretation, rather than trying to copy his subject. Georgia O'Keeffe began to experiment with abstract compositions and create her own personal style. She moved to New York and began working seriously as an artist. One champion of her work was the photographer and modern art promoter, Alfred Stieglitz. He eventually became her husband. Here is one of the many photographs he took of her. Georgia O'Keeffe was influenced by the work of photographers in her circle of friends. One visual technique they used was cropping and magnifying objects in their photos. O'Keeffe applied this approach to painting. We can see similarities to O'Keeffe's compositions in these photographs by Paul Strand. Georgia O'Keeffe simplified the subjects in her paintings. She said, it is only by elimination and emphasis that we get at the true meaning of things. Eventually, Georgia O'Keeffe moved to New Mexico. She was enchanted by the dramatic landscape of the high desert, and the majority of her life's work was done there. But from time to time, flowers still made their way into her paintings. 
Before we start looking carefully at a flower, let's learn a few handy color mixing tricks. We'll use our color wheel as a tool. Remember, the colors across from one another on the color wheel are called complementary colors. In our last class, we learned that we can make brown by mixing complementary colors because complements neutralize one another. Today, I'll show you how we can use that information to give us even more skill in mixing colors. What if you don't want to make brown, but you just want to neutralize a color a little bit? All you have to do is add a little bit of the complementary color. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose I'm painting these leaves. The green I have is too bright. But I can add just a touch of the complementary color to create the color I want. Red is the complement of green, so I'm just mixing a tiny bit in there. And it's certainly not an exact match, but it's getting closer to the color I'm looking for. I think I added just a little too much red, so let me keep playing with this. I'll put a little more green back in there. Let's see if I can get closer. That's a lot better. And I love to just keep playing around and see what might happen. I feel like there's a little yellow in those leaves besides just the green, so let's see how this works. The more you try this, the more you'll learn about mixing color. So now let's sharpen our observational skills and look closely at a flower. Remember that Georgia O'Keeffe simplified her subjects, so as we work on our flower paintings, we need to remember that what we leave out is as important as what we include. The last time I visited the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum in Santa Fe, I got this little postcard. It has a little viewfinder cut out in the middle, so you can look through it and choose what to include in your painting. You could easily make one of these at home. Another way to choose what to include in your painting is to take some closely cropped photographs, like Paul Strand did. I used my cell phone camera to narrow down what to include and what to leave out of my composition. I prefer to paint from a real flower rather than from a photograph, but in this case, I'll use both. This is my setup. I am doing my initial drawing with a piece of chalk. If I used a pencil, I would be too tempted to add unnecessary detail. Also, I'll be painting with tempera paint, which would make it impossible to paint a small detailed drawing. The chalk will help keep things large and simple. I'm looking carefully at my flower, but I'm not attempting to make an exact copy. I'm trying to get the feeling of the flower down on my paper. Even though all the flower petals are yellow, some places appear to be a lighter yellow and, and other areas more of an orangey yellow just because of the way the light hits it or the way it falls into shadow.
As you can see, I'm mixing a lot of color for this painting, usually not just using it straight from the bottle. I'm adding a little red to that green to tone it down like we did earlier. And that's the shadowy, shadowy, side, shadowy of the side of the flower. flower. This is my sunflower painting. I noticed that Georgia O'Keeffe often had beautiful grays and whites in the background of her flower paintings. You can get wonderful grays by mixing two complementary colors with a lot of white. I wanted to have the brush strokes in this background echo the flowy feeling of the flower. I thought you might enjoy seeing a sunflower shaped cheese ball I once made for a friend's birthday party. This is a little painting of tulips I once made on a card for a friend. I love the way the stems of tulips start to droop after you've had them for a few days. It almost looks like they're dancing. Finally, I painted some large morning glories on this canvas to decorate the telephone pole behind our house. It's attached with Velcro, so it can be taken down if anyone needs to climb the pole. Here are a couple of other views. I hope you're beginning to get the idea that when it comes to art, the possibilities are endless. Thank you so much for joining me today. Share your artwork with all of us at hashtag GoodTimeForArt. If you enjoyed this video, please make your art teacher happy and give it a like by clicking on the little thumbs up below. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for today. But remember, it's always a good time for art.